Hey everyone, welcome to a new video and to a change of background. As you can see, I moved my workstation. How exciting. You see, when you get my age, you, you usually don't like to change things. I don't like to change, but uh, sometimes it's great to change. Like, I like this new workstation. So anyway, welcome to a new video. So this is the sequel of the previous one on uh, scripting uh, with uh, within Max with JavaScript. So creating objects from within JavaScript in Max. And we're going to see today like a new method. So basically how we can retrieve the values output by those uh, objects, those number boxes without using patch cards, but using an uh, JavaScript object called Max Object Listener. So let's dive in. So here is the patch as we left it uh, in the previous video. Uh, of course, when you close the patch and then reopen it, uh, you cannot delete the objects that we created with the delete objects message, right? Because the, um, these objects in the array inside JavaScript, they were in the, um, in the RAM of our computer. So this is a, a memory that gets basically emptied every time we close a program or switch off the computer. So they don't exist anymore as reference inside JavaScript. That's what I'm trying to say. So we have to delete them by hand. We could create a system that remembers the name of these objects and then um, also if we close the patch, then we will be able to interact with them. But for the moment, we, we don't go so complex. So uh, there are basically a couple of bugs in this code that I created the last time. So let's see what they are. So basically when we call the delete objects function, um, we are not setting the array of comment objects to be an empty array. So it's keeping on adding elements to this array by pushing them every time we create a new comment object. It pushes it in this array of comments here, but uh, it's never emptying this array. So what we could do is actually this. Um, instead of setting the objects array empty in the create a number list function, we do it uh, after the for loop in our delete objects function. Right, so and then we also empty the comment objects array inside this uh, function as well. So we say now this is an empty array. So it basically removes all the elements that were already inside, which we um, actually deleted the physical objects in Max with the remove message to the P to the dispatcher object. And then uh, we also empty this array, so there are no more references inside uh, inside JavaScript for these objects as well. So now this works properly. We can create them as many times we want. Every time is going to delete the previous array and fill it with a new array. Good. Now what I want to do is to basically not connect those objects to each other. So I'm going to comment this line out. Uh, we are not going to use the connect objects function. So what I want to do is to assign uh, a max object listener to this max object and I'm going to assign it as a property of the object itself. So we created a max object in JavaScript, we called it max object, uh, is a new uh, max object and this is a set of properties and uh, functions associated with it. We're going to add another one um, ourselves. So we're going to say max object listener, listener, listener. It's equal to a new max object listener. Uh, this is a, this is a JavaScript object that basically allows us to listen to every change in this object. So the new number object that we created, we can listen to every change this object does. Like when it changes the value or we change some attribute for this object, we can get basically notified every time something changes in this object. So that's pretty cool. So we have to tell it which object we want to listen to. And we say we want to listen to, to the same object to which we are uh, uh, attaching the listener as a property. It's a bit unorthodox, I guess, to attach the listener to the object as a property of the object itself, but it works. So I guess it's no problem. And then we have to create another function, which is the second argument to the max object, li object listener constructor. Uh, is a function, is a callback function. So we're going to call it callback fun, which basically gets called every time this object modifies something. And what is passed inside this function is an argument, which is called, we will call it data, for example. And for example, what we can do is to, oops, is to 
output from the output of our JavaScript object data dot value. So this data is basically an object that gets passed to the um, to the callback function. And uh, it uh, has various properties. Value is, for example, the value that uh, the object that is listened is emitting. So if we outlet from this from the first outlet, we can output the value that the object is emitting. So we use this function as the second argument for the constructor of the max object listener. Good. Um, let's give it a try. So I'm going to create a bunch of objects. I'm going to attach a message box here and see if something works. Good. As you can see, it's reporting whatever object uh, I'm uh, interacting with and whatever number is outputting is being reported here in the callback function. So every object has its own uh, max object listener, but the callback function is the same for everybody. So they will always going to go. They are always going to call that function. Cool. So that, that's pretty cool. Now, let's see something else. Basically, what we could do is to create uh, a sender that uh, will send the data, so the, the value generated by those uh, number boxes to a receiver, um, which will be named as the same name of the object. So let's see if this makes any kind of sense. So for example, we can assign to our number boxes, a var name. So you know that uh, you know that max objects as a, have a variable have a var names, which basically means it's like an identifier in max that identifies them. Uh, identifies them in uh, max uh, is called the scripting name. Now, fortunately, you cannot see because my image is on top of it. But every object has its own scripting name. Uh, this is a bit dumb, actually. Right, let's do like this. So every object has its own scripting name. Now, this is a new created object that has no scripting name because we didn't assign any scripting name to it. But we can also assign scripting name in JavaScript. So as soon as we have created the object, we give it a variable name. So we can use the index to create like a different variable name for all these objects. And so we can say, for example, number underscore dot uh, plus index. This is going to be the variable name for these uh, for our number boxes. So if now I create them and I select uh, the first one, you can see that it will have a variable name number zero. And then the, this one will have a variable name number three. So the, um, the name is going to be number underscore and then the index of this object. Great. Good. So now we can do something like this. Every time we call our callback function, uh, we can send the, the value to an object named as uh, to a receiver that has the same name as the variable name of our number objects. It, it, the receiver doesn't have the variable name equal to the uh, variable name of the number objects. It just has the, the receiver name. So for example, if you create a receiver in max, that we call it like number zero. Now, um, this receiver is going to receive whatever we output from the first uh, uh, number uh, that we created. Great. So let's give it a try. We can do something like this. Uh, we can create a variable, call it name. And to get the, the variable name of this object, we have to do like this. So data, this object that is passed to this function automatically, has a property which is called max object, which basically represents the object that is listened uh, to, from the max object listener. So this data object has this uh, max object attached, which is the one we listen to. And this object, of course, is var name property. And then we can create a mess named function, which is a function built in in JavaScript in max, which basically sends the message that we want to the object, to the receiver, the test, the, the test is name. And then we can send, for example, data.value, which is the value output from the, our number box. So let's save it. Uh, let's create our number list. And let's see if it actually works. So I have a receiver here called the number zero. And cool, you can see that it's working because this object is called number zero. Um, our, scri our scripting name for the numbers uh, here is number zero. So this is going to receive it. Uh, because this is the, the the variable name is called number zero, and we say send a message to the same receiver called number zero, and so on, number one, and number two, and so on. Cool. Now 
Uh, I'm a bit annoyed by the fact that the comment box is on top of the number box. So what I'm going to do is to go inside. First, I'm going to delete the object. Then what I'm going to do is to go into our script. And when we create a comment here, we can actually select the, the size of the rectangle of this object by using the rect, the rect attribute of this object. So basically objects have, uh, have a rect attribute. For example, every actually of them has this patching rect attribute. So in JavaScript, we can access it as rect. And by the, for example, this is 70 by 22. So let's see. So we're going to assign to the rect attribute. Um, basically, this is going to be the left top corner of these uh, objects. So we said we want it to be at uh, 50 on the x-axis, and then this is going to be the y position. Then this is the length, basically, which we can say something like 100. And the y position is the same also for the bottom right corner. I'm going to save that to go into our patch, create a number list, and good. So now we can see that the rectangle uh, representing these objects each is much smaller and doesn't overlap with the number boxes. If we want to make it a bit smaller, we can say instead of 100, we can say 90. And there we go. Now it's perfectly matched with the writing, in, with the text inside the comments. Good. So. Um, that's all I wanted to show you, basically, how to use a max object listener inside uh, JavaScript, so script, uh, creation of objects, and attaching to them a max object listener, which will report every change uh, is done to those objects. So, for example, when the value is changed. And this works for every object, not just with uh, number boxes. It works, actually, with every other type of objects. And then we can, for example, send it using a mess named... Uh, uh, function from within our callback function, we can send it to an object that has the same name of the variable name of this object, but we could send it, of course, to whatever other name of the receiver. And yeah, this could actually be pretty useful in the case, for example, you want to create interfaces for uh, an abstraction or something like that. You want to separate uh, the, the graphic user interface from the actual mechanism of the of uh, your algorithm and then you want to create an user interface according to to some uh, options selected by the users then this is a great uh, case scenario use case scenario for uh, for this type of things when you actually don't want to then connect this stuff with num with patch cards you just want to create for example maybe a receiver in another sub patch uh, or somewhere else in your in your max uh, uh, context and this will work Good. So I hope this was useful. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, if you liked the video, it would be great if you put a like to it, if you subscribe to the channel. You can check my Patreon to, to get more patches and uh, all the stuff I shared during the years, which is mostly jitter things. Thank you very much and uh, see you soon. Ciao.